what's going on youtube and welcome back to my channel if you've been here before thank you for returning if you are new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications so you are notified every single time i drop a video and you don't miss not one video everybody in here smash that like button share this video and drop a comment down below during the video after the video before the video whatever you feel let me know what you think let me know what you like about the video let me know what you want to see next you saw by the title and the thumbnail we got a good one so let's get straight into this groom also you guys make sure you are watching the ads all the way through i know some of them can be a little lengthy but watch them as much as you can as long as you can as best as you can it helps to support this channel it helps to support me it helps to allow me to do this on more of a full-time basis in the future and it helps just to get me back out to the algorithm but with that being said, let's get back into the groom. Okay, everybody. So this is Dora and she is a miniature schnauzer, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you already knew that. But for those of you that did not know that she is a miniature schnauzer. Now, one of the comments that I had, I've seen it a couple times and somebody's asked me if I plucked dog ears. So I do pluck dog ears. It just depends on if they need them. I'm not going to pluck out three strands of hair if the dog doesn't need it. I'll just shave it out. I'd rather shave it out or do a quick little snip of the shears and scissor it out. Um, but I do pluck dog ears. I am not a huge fan of plucking dog ears because I don't like to see the dog in pain and it can be uncomfortable if it's not done correctly and granted I do know how to pluck dog ears I'm just not a fan of it especially if a dog has a huge mat in their ear that needs plucking I do not like to do that so I will get someone else to do it just like I'll get somebody else to remove a gigantic tick I'll remove a deer tick but a big old fat one absolutely not won't go near it and I say this all the time, and I believe I said this in another grooming video. I don't know how I became a dog groomer because there are so many things that I don't like. I don't like fleas. I don't like ticks. I don't like wet, dirty hair. I don't like hair just in general. I, there are so many things that gross me out. But for some reason, because I've been doing this for so long, I've become immune to them. I just have never become immune to removing gigantic ticks. I will not do it. <laughs> like at all. So I do want to explain how to pluck a dog's ear properly and as you guys have seen I did put ear powder in there so when you plucking an ear for a dog you want to load up a lot of ear powder in there and you want to make sure it gets in the ear canal so I'll pour it in there massage it in there so it falls down it gets really loose in there and I'll let that ear sit and then I'll go do the same thing to the other ear pour the ear powder in there massage it down the ear canal so when I'm plucking it it comes out easier and it doesn't hurt the dogs as much as it would if you did not put any air powder in there and me and the other girl in there we do the same thing we load up the ear with air powder actually a lot of groomers do it because plucking can be painful to dogs so with a dog that has mats on the inside of the ears and they want that hair plucked out no matter how much ear powder you're putting in the ear it's still going to hurt the dog because everything is matted together so you're pulling everything all the way from deep down in the, inside the ear and the ears can bleed if the dog has mats in the ears and you got to pluck them out the ears can become red and irritated so it's a lot when it comes to ear plucking which is why i'm not a huge fan of it but i do know how to do it and i know how to do it properly so what you want to do is you want to put the ear powder in there like i said massage it and let it sit for a little bit and then you want to go in and remove the hair that's in the ear not around the ear you don't want to plug out any of that because that can be shaved out that's also painful if you're trying to pull that out because it's like pulling hair off of their just natural skin but in the ear you want to pull out the hair that's actually in the ear canal and that is how it can be a little bit less painful for the dogs or a little bit less uncomfortable 
And let me just preference this by saying, yes, these are some of the hairiest ears I've seen on a schnauzer, which is why I was trying to get it as close to the camera so y'all can see. She has some hairy, yeasty ears. And what I learned about schnauzers is their ear hair can grow really fast. Not all schnauzers can be like that because some schnauzers don't have as thick of a coat as she does, but the ear hair can be ridiculous on a schnauzer and a poodle and a poodle a poodle's air hair oh my goodness i used to groom this dog louie back in philly where i used to live and when i say his ears filled up with hair so quickly i would pluck his ears to the point where there was no hair in there and i would shave around like his ears were clean and then he would come back in eight weeks and it would be like i never plucked his ears like i never i'm like what in the world but yes i do plug ears i just do it on certain dogs that i feel like need them i'd rather not put the dog through that if they don't need it if i could just shave it out So hopping back to it, this is Dora and she is getting, you guessed it, a schnauzer pattern. And I will go over how to do the schnauzer pattern because I do realize some of my schnauzer patterns are way back. So I'll go over in this video how to do the schnauzer pattern. Yes, she is matted. As you can see, she has mats all on her beard. She also has mats in her legs, but they're not as extensive as the mats in her beard.
So Dora has some allergies and she has very, very yeasty skin and her legs, her ears, all of it. So for her bath, I did a medicated shampoo. It is the Yucamed or Yuccamed by Quadrupid. It is awesome. It's not super harsh on their skin, but it also helps their skin out tremendously. And on the plus side, it gets their coat super clean, super, super clean. So I did that shampoo on her and then I did a spray on leave-in conditioner that they offer for that shampoo. And I let her sit in the shampoo for about 15 to 20 minutes because her skin was so bad. And bad in terms of very yeasty, but not bad in terms of irritated and raw. So her skin was really yeasty. So that's why I let her sit in it for so long.
so i put the happy hoodie on her because she is an older lady and i didn't want her to go into senior shock or dryer shock or anything that would freak her out and make her urinate and poop uncontrollably because that's what can happen when dogs go into dryer shock or have a senior moment while you're drying them they forget what's happening and they poop and pee all over the place and on them so I didn't want that to happen now while I'm drying her because I did the medicated shampoo and it loosened up a lot of those dry flakes on her skin a lot of that is coming off while I'm drying her so you'll hear me say oh look at that skin it's because <laughs> it's because the her skin flakes are coming off it can be a little gross but it, it helps it helps the dogs
So to set the schnauzer pattern, I'm gonna go through with a seven on her body because the mom likes her really short. So I'm doing a seven and then when I come down to her furnishings, you're gonna see me roll her skin up and that is just to help to set the pattern line lower like it's supposed to because it's not supposed to be in the middle of their body and look like a skirt when you set a schnauzer pattern that high it's way too high it should not look like that it's supposed to be down basically on their belly line so it's almost like an outline of their body so if you see my my thumb i'm just kind of raising her skin up just to help tighten the skin so the blade doesn't drag on her skin and then so I can also set her line where it's supposed to be set also for her furnishings the furnishings on the belly line is supposed to be tight so it's supposed to be very very small probably about a half an inch long but the owner of this dog likes her on the fluffier side so we leave her furnishings the same length that they are now we just kind of neaten them up and in, in my opinion she looks absolutely stunning when she's done it's probably one of my favorite schnauzer cuts that i've ever done because everything blended just so well on her Every time I do a schnauzer, I can never remember and I never want to mess it up. So I always feel for the chest bone because their front furnishings, right where the chest bone sits, the middle of their chest is supposed to sit right on top of the chest bone and the sides are supposed to come all the way down to the tops of their legs so the sides of the front if you can kind of see it goes up into like a hill that hill part is supposed to be high up above the chest bone everything else below that is supposed to be the start of the leg but some dogs you don't want to take too far down because they have calyx there and it won't look right it won't look blended right so you have to be very very careful when you're doing it and while you're shaving the dog, well, the schnauzer, and you're trying to partially blend off the furnishings, you want to shave down and then lightly come off of the dog's body as you're shaving down. And that'll help you partially blend them so you don't have to do as much scissor work. And right here I'm trying to stretch the skin as much as I possibly can and now as like I said I'm going to roll the skin up so I can bring the furnishings down because it was set just a little too high the last time. If I ever get asked what are my favorite breeds to groom my first one is always going to be a schnauzer because i love their haircuts i love how distinguished they look when they're done my second one is poodles because i love the different styles of haircuts they get and i just love a good clean face and clean feet and then i absolutely love grooming doodles but you all know that because i talked about that in all of my doodle videos <laughs> I love grooming doodles. I think they come out so cute. A lot of people don't like grooming doodles because they can be a lot of work. I'm not going to lie and say they are not a lot of work. Almost every doodle is a lot of work because they have a very thick coat. They're combined with a poodle who has a thick coat and another breed that has a thick coat. So a Labradoodle, a Golden Doodle, an Aussie Doodle, a Burner Doodle. They all have astronomically thick coats. So I understand why most people don't like to groom doodles because they're a lot. But I I love them because I love how their haircut comes out.
So for the top of her head, I'm going to take that same seven blade and I'm going to go in reverse because a seven in reverse is a 10 blade and the 10 blade is what goes on the top of the head. And then I stop right where those eyebrows are supposed to go. Now, when you're doing a schnauzer face, the tops of the head is a 10, the ears are a 10, and the sides of the face is a 10. Now, when you're shaving the sides of the face, you have to be mindful of where you're shaving because you don't want to mess up the structure of the haircut. So, when you're shaving a 10 on the sides of the face, you sh shave a little bit behind the corner of the eye. And when you're scissoring, you scissor from the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth. So it's supposed to be a diagonal scissor and a diagonal, I don't even know the terminology for it, but the beard is not supposed to be a straight square. It's supposed to go into maybe like, almost like an upside down triangle, if that makes sense, if you're trying to figure out shapes. And then if you're looking at the face forward and you see the eyes it's literally a slant so it goes from the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth So if you're looking at the size of her face, you can see where I shaved. I didn't shave in the diagonal line like I would when I scissor it because if you shave it, it's too blunt and it's hard to blend. So you want to shave just right behind that line. And then when you go in with your thinning shears, that's when you blend it all and it makes that perfect schnauzer face.
Now when you're shaving a schnauzer sanitary, I'm going to try and explain this as best I can. You don't want to shave too close to the furnishings because that's how you thin out the furnishings and you can shave some of them off. So you want to shave obviously the backs of the legs because all of that is tight and shaved down. You shave their actual sanitary part where they use the bathroom and then you shave almost like in the middle of their belly. And you can shave outward, but you don't want to shave too close to their furnishings because you don't want to shave their furnishings off. So now that I have shaved her body, I'm going to go through and demat some of her knots. Well, not some of her knots. I'm going to demat her knots in her body so that I can go through and comb it out and make sure there's no more tangles and then then and cheer the blending line to make sure that everything is nice and neat and blended well. And then I'm going to neaten up her legs and her belly and her chest area. Now I know some may ask, why didn't I brush her out before I shaved her down? The reason why I didn't brush her out before I shaved her down is because her body wasn't getting a guard comb taken to it. Now if, well, her legs and her furnishings weren't getting a guard comb taken to it. If I was going to do a guard comb on her legs and her furnishings, I would have brushed her out in the beginning. But because her legs keep the same length that they are now, they just get neatened up. I didn't feel the need to demat her first and I wanted to get half of her groom done because I think that I was close to the end of the day this day so I wanted to get some of it finished up and also I knew after I brushed her out I only had scissor work and I leave my scissor work for last so I like to save that for last so I figured I would shave her body shave her head shave her ears demat her go through do my scissor work and that's pretty much the routine that I have so I like to follow my routine because I realize it speeds me up as a groomer I get all my clipper work done first if I don't have to brush them out first then I go through with my scissor work and then they are done
so now I'm gonna go through and scoop out her eyes but I'm gonna hold her eyebrows back so I don't shave any part of her eyebrow off So for schnauzer eyebrows, they are to be curved in. So in order for me to create the makeshift curve without using curved shears, I will scissor down to a certain part of the eyebrow and leave the ends of it long so it looks like it curves inward without actually using curved shears or creating a curve. And then there's generally no harsh line. When I am scissoring the eyebrows, I promise you I nitpick on that the absolute most because I am so nitpicky when it comes to the dog's face and the eyebrows are very distinctive on schnauzers. So if the eyebrows aren't right, the whole face isn't right. So I nitpick on eyebrows so much. So now I'm going to go through with my thinning shears and just kind of thin up around her eyes, just the corner of her eyes where I scooped out. And then I'm going to thin in between her eyebrows so that is cleaned out. Now, full disclosure, in this video, I did thin and shear a little bit too short right next to her front left eyebrow. And the owner was not phased by it she was like that is perfectly fine she looks absolutely phenomenal and she was very appreciative of the groom but as i'm scissoring just to kind of blend the lines you can see i'm holding my shears in a diagonal motion because i'm creating that line that i didn't create when i was shaving the face so you always want to create that line with your thinning shears not your blades
so right now I am just blending the line with my thinning shears just so everything can run smoothly and it doesn't look like a harsh cut on the body everything kind of just falls naturally and it looks like the short body is growing into the long skirt and after I do that I'm going to go in with my shears and just neaten up the outline of her body
and if you guys have any questions wondering what I did if you have any questions about how to groom your schnauzer at home just drop it in the comments I will be more than happy to answer some of your questions I can teach you some of my techniques if you'd like to or explain some of my techniques if you like to just let me know drop it in the comments and I'll be more than happy to help make sure you guys are smashing that like button
Okay, now I am wrapping up the end of Dora's groom. I'm just gonna go through her with a comb, see if there's any sticky outies that I need to scissor, see if there's any mats that I missed. And with that, we are going to take a quick flashback look at what she looked like when she first came in. So this is Dora when she first came in, full of mats, full of dirt, and this is her after. And like I said, she's one of my favorite schnauzers that I've groomed because she looks so cute. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, share, all that fancy YouTube stuff. Train your dogs for grooming. I'll catch you in the next video. Love you guys.